Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to go into some basic electrical troubleshooting. Um, so we're just going to literally go to the basics, how to draw a schematic. Okay, and then there's a board I created, so you're going to see me troubleshooting in live time. Uh, we'll identify the components, and then the end goal is for everyone to be able to follow the schematic and be able to troubleshoot the schematic in real time. All right, so let's just identify our components. We have switch one, we have our light, we have element one, element two, contactor, and then our coils in the back here. This is a different style contactor. Here's the coil here, just to show some different styles. And these switches are just representing thermostats. So we have TS1 and TS2. All right, first things first. Uh, let's just identify our components. So this is a switch right here and that's our light bulb. So that's circuit one and let's just connect the lines. All we're doing is connecting to L1 and neutral. Now here is circuit number two, which was our element. So our light equals the element. We'll label it as EL1. So that's what an element will typically look like. And we'll label the sec or the third circuit as EL2. And this right here is a contactor contact. So in our case, our contactor has two contacts. And this circle usually represents the contactor coil. So in this case, it's our C1 contactor coil. And last but not least, we have a thermostat that is controlling the contactor coil. I don't have the exact symbol for the thermostat, so we'll kind of use one of these uh, funny looking switches. But let's get everything labeled here. So there's our coil. Here's our thermostat one. And last but not least, let's connect the lines here really quickly. So as you can see, L1 is feeding the contactor coil. And then it's feeding the element. And then here's our coil. And you can kind of see the whole loop here. And then our thermostat is wired into our coil. And last but not least, we bring our neutral over and now we have a complete circuit. So for the third circuit, which is element two, we're just going to copy and paste, move it over. Okay. So this part's really important, uh, knowing how to draw a schematic. Okay. This part will really help you. If you can draw a schematic, the troubleshooting of it becomes so much more easier. All right. So we have a complete circuit here. All right, so let's just start by <clears throat> uh, mapping out our schematic here, which is really important. So the importance of knowing how to draw it makes everything so much easier. So how I explain everything is just think of everything as either a switch or a load, okay? So a load is obviously going to be the light and then the two elements, and then our switches are going to be the contactor contacts, our thermostat, and then our contactor coil actually becomes a load. So the contactor is actually a load and a switch. But that's a whole other thing we'll get into later. <clears throat> so we'll map it out really quick. The light's really easy. So as soon as we get power from our main switch, it closes. Okay. So it closes this bridge. I just call them bridges. Once that bridge is closed, we have a straight shot. Okay. Now where people get stuck on is they, they'll test this to ground. So if you test this point right here to ground, you're going to get 120 volts and you're going to think the light's bad, but you need your neutral. Okay. And this becomes more important when you get into 208, 240, when you're doing one phase, three phase, you cannot test things to ground. I cannot stress that importance enough. So as you can see, neutral is a straight shot. There's no bridges. There's nothing, no switches. Okay. This circuit's really easy. Now let's go into our element one circuit so as soon as our switch closes here we're going to take this laneway here okay so this is where people get confused and they start testing all the components okay your goal should be to test the least amount of components possible and if you get really good at reading schematics you can actually get it down to you're only going to test two or three components Okay, because you're going to get all the visual cues, which I've been talking about in a lot of my videos. The visual cues are very important. Okay, they help you, point you in the right direction. So how I explain this is, I think of this as you're driving a car. Okay, so there's car one, 
L1 and car two, which is the blue one or the neutral. So the red car, your goal is to get to your destination. So, and then how I explain this again is pretend you're an Uber driver. Okay. Your destination is element one. You want to get to the load always. That's always your destination, the load. Okay. So we're going to come up here and this is where people get stuck. They're going to come here and they're going to test this thermostat. Then they're going to test this coil. Okay. We don't want to test any of that stuff. I want to drive the quickest route. So have it in your head. You're an Uber driver. Your quickest route to get to this element is literally driving up through here and through here. These are side streets. Don't take the side streets. Take the main road. What's the quickest route? So now if we come up to here, contact or contacts. Okay, this is another bridge. If the bridge is open, obviously you can't drive your car to the next side. So if this bridge is open, so that means your contactor contact is not closing. At that point, we're going to reroute here and we're going to go to our side street. And we're going to test from here and we're going to see TS1. Well, is this bridge open or closed? Okay, if the bridge is open, then guess what? Uh, we probably have a bad thermostat. Okay, if the bridge is closed, that means we've completed this circuit here. Okay, so that's only one side of the circuit. Now you need your second car. Okay, so the second car comes through here. It's a straight shot up through here. But as we know, the contactor contacts are not closing. So we're going to take this side road. And if this wire here is not broken, Okay, we will have 120 volts here. If we have 120 volts at this contactor coil and this bridge right here is not closing, you have a bad contactor. Okay, so let's just clean this up super quickly. So let's say we're driving up here and this bridge is closed. If this bridge is closed, okay, that contactor is doing its job and it's a straight shot to the element. If this bridge is closed, there's no need to drive down this road. Do not drive down this road. I see people make this mistake all the time. They test all the components. Do not test all the components. Okay. You're driving a car. What's the quickest route? So let's go with our neutral. What's the quickest route to go through here, go here, circle back, come back, go back up. I see people do this all the time. Okay. The quickest route is literally drive your car right to the bridge. Bridge is closed, perfect. We're at the element. So if we're at the element and we have 120 volts, we're not testing the ground, right? You have 120 volts here. Okay, and the load's not doing its job. We have a bad element. Okay, do not drive down these two streets here if you do not have to. Okay, and then we'll just go do the same thing on the other circuit. And it's literally a duplicate circuit. So we're just driving our car through here. And we're coming to this bridge. Okay, what's the bridge? It's the contactor contacts. Either it's opened or closed. If it's closed, look at that. Straight shot, we're good. Same thing with our neutral. We're gonna drive our car. Okay, we're not gonna come down this side street, right? We don't need to until we get stuck. We're gonna come up to this bridge. Bridge is closed. Bang, we made our destination. So your goal is to drive these two cars. Okay, your red and your blue to the destination in the quickest route possible. Okay, and we make the joke in our training class, like with the price of fuel, you know, you got to get there as quick as possible. You're going to make no money being an Uber driver, but same thing as a tech. You need to work efficiently. You need to read the schematic. Okay, you need to understand the quickest way of getting there. And your goal should be anytime you pull up a schematic and you look at the visual cues to be like, okay, I only need to test two or three points on this schematic and when you get to that point like that's the advanced level where things are just clicking everything starts making sense because you're spending yeah five minutes reading the schematic but if you're just jumping in here and testing all these points contactor coil thermostat contacts contacts power in oh you're just guys start chasing their tails and i find they start testing the same components two or three times the voltage doesn't change it's going to be the same okay so your goal is to troubleshoot efficiently
All right, so I'll let you start by seeing what's going on here. So as you can clearly see, element one is not turning on. All right, so element one is not turning on. Okay, so this is the visual cues I've been talking about. So the light's turning on. So what's that telling me? This bridge is closed. I don't not, I don't need to test that. Okay, I know my neutral's coming up. Why? Because the light's turning on. Now let's take it. Let's take it even further. Element two. Okay. It's turning on. What's that telling me about this bridge? It's closed. I do not need to test anything in this circuit. And same thing with our neutral. It's a straight shot to the contact or contacts. This bridge is closed, right? So that means, you know, I can, I don't need to test, you know, a lot of these points. Okay. I'm not testing any of this stuff. So now I can put the blinders on and I can just focus on this area right here. Okay. That's my goal to focus now on this little box in here. And I've just eliminated, you know, two thirds of the schematic. Okay, now I'm just focused in and things are gonna become a lot easier because I just eliminated a lot of the schematic and literally we're just gonna go like this. And I just need to focus right here. I just eliminated the rest of the schematic. So let's test power in of our contactor. 120. We're going to test power out of our contactor. No voltage. All right, so we had power in to our contactor, but no power out. So what's that telling us? This bridge right here is open. So next, we're going to come here and we're going to test our contactor coil. Let's test that there. We're getting zero volts. So the next thing I want to test is this thermostat. Next thing we're going to do is test our TS1 thermostat. So we'll do that by taking our neutral. And we got 124 in. Zero volts out. So that's telling us the switch is bad. Let's just test our potential difference. 123 volts potential difference. This thermostat is bad. All right, so as you can see there, we had a bad thermostat. So you can troubleshoot from two directions, either driving in this way or from here. I like to go to the load and work backwards. So in my case, when I tested at the coil right here, I had no voltage. So I just start working in this direction, okay? And we had power coming into the thermostat, okay? But nothing coming out. That means this bridge is open. So that means our fault is this thermostat. And then in the end, we ended up testing with potential difference. So we tested from power into the thermostat to power out in the thermostat, okay? So we tested a cross uh, L1 and we're getting 123, 124 volts. So that's confirming the switch is in fact open. All right, so let's fire up here. And as you can see, element two is not working. So let's start our troubleshooting here. So we're gonna start by testing power in. 120. We're gonna go to our contactor, power in. 123 volts. We're gonna test power out. 123 volts. So that's telling us we have power to the load here. And if we have power at the load and the load's not doing its job, the load is bad. So we have a bad element here. All right, as you can see there, so element one was getting power. So that circuit was complete. No need to troubleshoot there. Put your blinders on. Okay, we're only gonna focus on this part of the schematic. Okay, we just eliminated like 70% of the schematic. So we're gonna drive up our car here. Okay, we checked for power into this contactor contact. We checked it. We checked for power out and we had 120 in and out. So that means we're good here. Same thing on the neutral side. We came up here. This was good. Okay, what's that telling us as well? That this circuit here is complete, right? This circuit's complete because our contactor contacts were closing. So I don't need to test anything in that circuit right here. Okay, do not come down these little side streets unless you have to. 
find the quickest route to get to your destination and if we have power at the load so how i always explain is think of it as a light bulb if you have power at your light bulb it's not turning on the light bulb's bad so in this case the element was bad all right so we're going to fire up element two is not working so let's go through our sequence we're going to start by testing power in Hundred and twenty volts. Next, we're going to go to our contactor. Test power in. Hundred and twenty volts. Next, we're going to test power out of the contactor. We're getting no power out. All right. So we have power into the contactor. No power out. That means this bridge is open. On both sides. So what does that mean? That means. We have to reroute unfortunately and we have to come back to these little side streets we don't have a choice so we're going to come back and test this section in here next we're going to test our contactor coil 123 volts okay so that's telling us this contactor is bad all right, so we had 120 volts at this C2 contactor coil. So what's that telling us? It's telling us this road is complete. All bridges are closed. It's telling us this wire is good and this road's complete. Okay, so anytime we have power at the coil, these contacts should close. These bridges have to be closed. If they are not, the contactor is bad. All right, so element two is not firing up. 123 volts good next we're going to go to our contactor coil 123 in we're going to check power out of our contactor zero volts next we want to check our contactor coil 0 volts there all right so similar scenario here we came up here power in was good power out was not what's that telling us this bridge is open if the bridge is open guess what we got to backtrack to the side street so let's backtrack um, first thing I tested was this contactor coil there's no power at this contactor coil so now we're just gonna work backwards and see where the power stops or where the bridge is open So next we're going to check our thermostat 2, so we're going to come from our neutral, we're going to check power in, 120 in, 120 out. So that's telling us we have a broken line either on the hot or neutral. So how we're going to test that is we're going to take our neutral here and we're going to test all the way to our coil and we're getting 123 volts. All right, so as you can see there, we had power into our thermostat and out, but we do not have power at this contactor coil. So that means one of these roads are broken, okay? If the road's broken or the, um, we obviously can't drive through it. So, um, so these become like little laneways or little bridges, okay? So the first thing I did was I tested from this side of the contactor coil to the neutral. So it's important to know which side the neutral and the contactor coil is because if you test from here to L1, it's actually gonna give you potential difference and it'll actually give you zero volts and you'll get confused. So you need to know which side is which. So in this case, I had 120 volts 
which tells me this road is good. Okay, all that's left now is this road. Okay, so let's go test that really quickly. Test from our hot to our neutral side of the coil. We're getting no voltage. And that means this wire here is broken. All right, so this time we tested from our neutral side of the contactor coil to L1. We had no voltage, so that means this um, this piece of wire is broken or this piece of laneway or whatever or this bridge is open. So we have a break in this wire.